Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, which will be week 13 of the Automotive Weekly Waveforms, we will be looking at fuel pump amperage or fuel pump current. Um, this is a very common test um, that is talked about in all the training courses and it's quite useful. I see more good pumps than I see bad pumps or I see more pumps that don't even look like they have a problem than I see pr pumps with obvious problems. But sometimes on that tricky vehicle that has a stall out issue, um, it can be beneficial or just to judge the health of the pump in general. Now, I'm not one to recommend a pump based off of, you know, an anomaly I see if it doesn't have a related drivability complaint because I've had customers that have bad looking pumps that the pump lasts forever. Um, so what we're gonna need for this test in order to get all the measurements is a low amp clamp. Um, one that can preferably go under 20 amps and then on this particular vehicle, I'm not sure if this will work or not, but I like to use a set of relay jumpers. So you take the fuel pump relay out, you install one of these jumpers. They have a little loop on the top and a toggle switch so you can control the fuel pump. Now this Chrysler minivan may not have power to the fuel pump relay, all the time. Um, a lot of these run power through the ASD relay as well. So they only energize the power terminal of the fuel pump relay when the vehicle is running. So we'll try one of these. If it doesn't work, this one also has a fuse for the fuel pump. We will just pull that fuse out and install a fuse loop and we'll just run the vehicle. Now you will get slightly different readings depending on if the vehicle is sitting um, off at 12 volts or running at around 14 volts. Um, the amperage will be a little bit different and the speed of the pump will be a little bit different. I'm gonna start with the Pico scope, and I'm gonna show you guys how to get those measurements, how to get everything set up, and then we'll jump onto the snap-on scope. So flipping that switch on the relay bypass looks like it's gonna run the pump, so we don't have to pull the fuse and put a fuse loop in. We can just go right at the relay and it's still protected by the same fuse. So just turning this on, it's on auto scaling. I do see a little bit of noise. It could be coming from the lights. Um, I am using a PDI clamp and I don't think that these come with a shielded cable. So that could be where the noise is coming from. We are going to set this up for a low amp clamp, 20 amp mode. And typically under 10 amps is what you're gonna see. Most fuel pumps from my experience are gonna be anywhere from four to seven amps, unless it's a newer vehicle, GDI vehicles, returnless fuel systems, where it's really ramping up the pressure of that fuel pump. Um, some of those will be you know, 14 to 18 amps. But a lot of those are pulse width modulated, so they don't heat up the wiring as much. They normally don't have a really big fuse. Um, they're computer controlled. Okay, so before I even turn this on, I can see that I am not zeroed. We're gonna zero my amp clamp, and I'm going to flip the switch on this relay bypass. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that amp clamp because uh, it gave me a waveform, but it looked like it was AC coupled. So I'll have to get that one checked out. So now we're using the Snap-on um, 2060 low amp clamp. Part number is EETA 308D. Turn off the pump. We're sitting at zero volts. We know that we are leveled out. Turn the pump on. I can hear it hissing. We are pulling between four and a half and five and a half amps. And we are going to see you know, an amplitude of you know, 0.7 amps up to one and a half amps, the height of our waveform. So let's capture just a little bit here. And with, since we're using the Pico scope, we can add a little more time on the screen just in case we're trying to catch a, a glitch or a dropout. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. We'll turn the fuel pump off so we don't run our battery down. Save the waveform. Okay, so now that we have the fuel pump waveform saved, we're just gonna zoom in. Now we're gonna see some, some variations in the pump. 
and they're normally repeatable and sometimes changing your height makes it a little more obvious um, but we can see that we have a dip here and it rises up and we have a dip here and it rises up so i'm going to go zoom in a little bit further actually go back Now there are brushes and a commutator bar inside that fuel pump. And as those brushes make contact with the pump and it spins around, depending on the number of commutator bars on there, we're going to see a different waveform. Um, so eight commutator bars is a pretty common pump. Some have, I think 10, some have 12. Um, but we're, we're looking for the repeating pattern here. And it's a little tricky because the repeating pattern is going to duplicate itself, but not 100% sure, because as that pump is sitting here like this and we have a brush on each side, when that pump spins 180, aren't those brushes going through that same commentator? But they're in a different position, so we, so we might see a slight glitch on part of the waveform. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag one cursor over here, and we can see that we have this you know, escalating rise here and then it drops down and then an escalating rise here and it drops down and the same thing here and it drops down now this one is pretty obvious on where the pattern repeats itself but some are a little less obvious and that pattern can kind of duplicate itself um, so we do have kind of a higher peak here and a higher peak here those are the same set of windings in that fuel pump it's just that it's 180 out and the brushes are in a different position at that point now, the other thing that we can't see right here is we can't see a whole lot of mechanical wear or if the pump has a, a bad impeller or a loose hose based just off of this information. We kind of have to put the whole picture together and sometimes we'll put a pressure transducer on the fuel rail as well to get some additional information. But using the Pigo scope with just two cursors, which I'm actually in the wrong spot here, I need to be back on the matching hump which is right there. If we look down at the bottom of the screen, it says that this pump is, the frequency of this pump is 91.36 Hertz. And we're operating at 5,400 RPM. So between that 5,000 and 6,500 RPM range is what I would say is what I normally see. Sometimes I'm a little higher, sometimes a little lower. And computer controlled pumps, vehicles with a fuel pump control module, the waveforms are gonna com look completely trash compared to this, and we'll have to go about testing those a different way. So just looking at this waveform, I don't see any major anomalies that say, hey, I have a bad pump, I got a bad set of brushes, um, the commentator's bad, the pump is sticking. I don't see that. Um, if we look at our amplitude here, our, our full swing from high to low, we're at 1.17 amps. That seems about normal from what I see. Our total amperage is about normal. Um, the only reason I'm checking this vehicle is because the customer said that they had it stall on them the other day. Um, after they got gas, they were driving down the road, it stalled. Didn't want to start back up right away. When it did start, they had low power, and then it picked up and started running like normal. So we're expecting to see some sort of fuel pump issue. It just hasn't acted up again. Um, so I was hoping that this test would actually show a major fault in this waveform. Now, there's other ways the fuel pumps can fail as well. We may have perfectly fine brushes. The commentator may be perfect, but the impellers are worn or there's a bad spot in an impeller and sometimes that fuel pump sticks. Um, we've seen that and I, I actually had two of them in one week, I had two weeks ago, I ran into two pumps, two different vehicles that the pump was actually seizing up whenever it got, whenever it got hot. So normally if we have a bad brush or a burnt commentator bar, there is going to be a larger dropout between you know, one set of commentators and another, and then the next one will be a little bit higher amperage as well. So with the PicoScope, it's pretty easy to throw the cursors on there and see what our fuel pump RPM is. Um, with the amp clamp installed, we see what our amperage is. Now this will fluctuate a little bit. Now this vehicle, I don't know exactly what the fuel pressure spec is. It's probably between 45 and 55. But on some vehicles that run higher pressure, GMs that run 60, the amperage might be a little bit higher. Um, the fuel pump RPM is normally about the same. Vehicles that run a little bit lower, um, 
I would say, you know, like the 35 spec, the amperage might be a little bit lower. Since there's not as much restriction pushing back on the pump, the pump is gonna spin a little bit faster and typically will have a lower amperage draw. As that pressure rises up, if we pinched off, which this is probably returnless fuel, but on a return vehicle, if we pinched off the fuel line or the return line, that amperage is gonna go up a little bit. Um, one that I had the other day, we had to pump out some diesel fuel from the tank. Customer got the wrong stuff. And I had the line unhooked from the engine. And I think that one was pulling a little less than four amps, uh, between three and four amps. But on that one, the pump speed didn't increase as much as I expected. So now that we looked at that one, let's go ahead and jump on. I'm gonna use the Modus for this one. Um, since I'm only using a single channel, we don't need you know, the, the Zeus out. Um, a little harder to record on the, the Modus, but I know a lot of you guys are using the Triton platform or the Modus platform, so that's what we'll use today. So for this, we're gonna get a scope multimeter. I already have the amp clamp connected to channel one. We're gonna go to lab scope. And since we're only using a single channel, we can just click on low amp. We're set to a 10 amp scale by default. It does have a trigger set up. Um, we probably won't need it, but since Snap-on runs an auto trigger, um, once we have a waveform on the screen, it'll show us that anyways. We have a thin line at zero because I don't have the fuel pump activated right now. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And we can now see the fuel pump waveform. Now this looks a little bit different than what we're seeing on the PicoScope because this is zoomed in a little bit more. Um, we have a 10 second sweep across the screen. Uh, 10 milliseconds. And on the PicoScope, we were capturing quite a bit more information, but the Snap-on, we wanna start out small. Looking at a single tree, we are going to zoom out to see the entire forest. Um, so even this, you may wanna step this down to five milliseconds. Um, you won't get as much capture time this way, so 10 or 20 milliseconds may be fine. Um, but if you want a higher resolution picture, we'll step that down a little bit. Let's hit the stop button. It's gonna process for a second. Hit the zoom out button. And now we can zoom back in a little bit. So now we're seeing a similar waveform to what we had on the PicoScope. Now I know it's a little bit harder for you guys to see, um, and we can't do any vertical scaling here, but we can get quite a bit of information from this waveform. Let me move this out of the way. Um, just looking at the side of the screen, my center line is around five amps, so our peak is a little less than six, but we're not dropping much below five. So just at a quick glance, I would say that the fuel pump amperage is fine. Now we need to look for that repeating pattern. I'm not sure if I can pick it out in this one very easily because we don't have that amplitude, um, but we can kind of see the, the wave going on. Let's turn on the cursors. And I can see here we have a, two lows and then it starts rising up. So it doesn't matter which one we, uh, we go to as long as we sync up to the same one. So that's three lows and then a rise. And if we, if we know that most of these domestic vehicles have an eight bar pump, we can count the humps here. So we, we're set there. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that verify that we are you know, on the right track. If we counted nine, we, we know we have a problem. Um, I don't know how many manufacturers use a, a 10 or 12 bar pump. Um, so a lot of domestics are gonna be an eight. Now, Snap-on doesn't calculate the RPM for us. So what they do is they have the frequency down here at the bottom. So we are at 96.64 Hertz. Now you could do it off the milliseconds as well if you are using a scope that doesn't have the frequency. But with the Hertz, that's how many cycles per second. So if we want RPM, all we have to do is we had 
2.64 times 60 equals 5798. So that is our pump RPM. So same reading, different scope, um, just a few different options. We can save that file as well. Since I'm using the modus, um, it's not gonna ask us to enter all the information in. So we're all good to go. Now, if you have a pump that is stuck, our amperage is gonna be a lot higher. Let me pull up a couple of examples that I had from a couple of weeks ago. The first one was on a Nissan pickup. It would intermittently not start or have a long crank time. Um, sometimes the pump would seize up and it would not be able to run. And on this one, I was pulling like 18 amps. So when, when I see a really high amperage like that, I know that there's either more than one thing on that fuse or the fuel pump is seized up. We also had no rotation of that fuel pump. And then the second one was a Ford pickup, I believe, a Ford F-150. Um, same thing, intermittent no start. Uh, they would go into the grocery store, come back out, it wouldn't start, or it'd have a long crank time. And the guy's been having the problem for over a year and it finally just got worse to where he was actually concerned about it. Um, so he brought it in and we checked it out. And it took me quite a while to get it to act up, but when it did act up, uh, when it was running fine, the waveform looked fine. It was pulling like six and a half amps, but when it wouldn't run fine, when it wouldn't start, that fuel pump was pulling like six, 16 amps. Um, so that's an indication of the pump is seized up. Sometimes just the shock of getting from, getting a hot pump and putting gas in the vehicle and everything gets cold, it'll seize that pump up. And I'm suspecting that's what happened with this one, but I want to verify it. I wanna see the, the fuel pump actually fail before I recommend a pump. So what I may have to do is drain some fuel out of it, run it, get it hot, add some fuel, and see if I can duplicate the customer concerns. So I think that wraps it up for this one. For this week's waveform, post up a picture of your fuel pump amperage. So we only need a single channel on this one. Um, sh here shortly, I will introduce the pulse sensors and the pressure sensors, the WPS 500 or the Snap-on or ATS pressure transducers and a first look or Delta pulse sensor um, or that style of sensor is what we're going to be using for some additional tests. Um, link to the Facebook group is down below. Question, comments, type those in. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching. See you next time.